Imagine, you've just gotten home from the hospital. You're all settled in. You look into your sweet new baby's eyes and you're wondering what all parents, from I believe the beginning of time, at least the beginning of human existence, have wondered. How the F do I keep this thing alive? I'm Kelsey, I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner and mom to actual human babies, not just baby dolls. And today on this episode of Parenthood Prep, we're gonna answer that question, so stay tuned. None of what I'm speaking about today is meant to at all replace medical advice from your child's own medical provider. If you have concerns, please reach out to them personally and take their advice. Do not come to this video. This is just for education, to build up your confidence and empower you as a parent. Education only here. Hi friends. The whole point of today's episode is to give you guys some really simple practical tips to help you take care of your newborn safely and also confidently. I completely know what it's like as a new parent to feel really nervous and when I became a first time mom, I was working as a pediatric ICU nurse and I was in school to become a pediatric nurse practitioner and I still had that feeling, that nervousness in the pit of my stomach when I first took my daughter home and looked at her like, oh my gosh, I hope I don't screw up. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a universal experience. The first thing to know is that you're not alone. Um, you have a pediatric team that's there to help you, to answer questions and to be, um, you know, right there alongside of you, assessing your child, looking at their weight, caring about all these medical things and health things so that you can just focus on loving your baby and, and doing the things you need to day to day to take care of them. So my first piece of advice would be know who that team is before your child is even born. Look into different clinics, uh, pediatricians or other pediatric providers in your area and try and make some sort of decision about where you'd like your child to be seen so that you're already comfortable um, with that person, you're already comfortable reaching out. Every pediatric clinic is gonna have some way of answering your questions 24 seven, day or night. So it may look like a nurse advice line. It may be that there's always a physician or another provider on call. So I would become familiar with how to reach out to your pediatric provider and um, you know what that process is gonna look like. Should you send a portal message? Uh, should you call? It can look a little bit different uh, place to place, but know that you're not alone. And along with that, you're gonna be taking your baby in to see their pediatrician or other pediatric provider quite a lot, especially in that first month of life. Typically there is a newborn visit when baby's just a few days old. There's usually an appointment at one week of life, two weeks of life, one, one month of life. So there's lots of, um, lots of checking in on your baby that your medical team is going to be doing. And if they see any concerns, they're going to bring that up with you and talk with you. And if you have any concerns, you get to bring that, those concerns up and talk with them. So you really should have lots of support from your medical team in that first month of life and really like the first year of life and for all of your child's childhood, but especially in that first month of life, expect that you'll be coming into the clinic or seeing your medical team and talking with your medical team a lot and feeling ideally very supported. Next piece of advice, take an infant CPR class. Now I know there are lots of videos on YouTube or Instagram or other social medias of um, just tips, I guess, or demonstrations of, um, of infant CPR. And those are great. I like that people are trying to make it very accessible and easy, but I also just don't think that that can replace taking an actual course. And I would re recommend a course from either the Red Cross or the American Heart Association. Those are those um, you know, really accredited courses that are going to make sure you really know what you're doing and how to respond to different emergency situations for your infant. Not only is it important from an infant safety standpoint, most parents are not going to have to use those skills, but if you have to, then you know that you have them. And so I think it's also helpful just for building your confidence as a parent. Next, B 
beware of safety hazards. Most parents are gonna find a lot of these comments pretty common sense, but uh, you know, if you haven't taken care of a baby before, it might not be. So being really careful about hot things, water, even if it's an inch of water, don't leave your baby alone near or in water. It is a drowning hazard. And then any sort of height. This one is tricky because your newborn can seem so incapable of moving and it can seem very safe to place them on a height like a changing table and take a few steps away to grab something else. But even newborns can roll over on occasion. Oftentimes it's a little bit of a fluke if they have a big head and they can just twist their body in a way that they can fall from, end up falling from that height. So anytime your baby's on a height, you should really have a hand on them, such as the changing table, or if you're you know, laying them on your bed, um, any sort of a height, you should be right there and have a hand on them to prevent any sort of injury. And then a safe place to sleep. I know I've touched on this before, but it's ideal for infant safety for them to be sleeping in a separate sleep surface. The mattress should be flat, firm, nothing extra, no bumpers, blankets, pillows. You should be laying them down to sleep flat. Um, I know that this can be really tricky, especially with infants that are fussy. I certainly don't, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't recommend just from a practical standpoint that like your baby has to sleep every single time they sleep on their back. But especially with a newborn, they fall asleep when they're eating, they're gonna fall asleep in your arms. And if you enjoy those cuddles, it is not ruining them to have them sleep in different situations. I do think it's good to get them used to that safe um, area of sleep, sleeping on their back with kind of minimal things. Um, it's good to get them used to that, but you don't have to worry if they fall asleep in your arms or even you know in a baby carrier, in a sling, as long as you have eyes on them. That's really the big difference. If they are not in that super safe sleep environment, that crib or bassinet with nothing extra and that flat, flat firm mattress, you need to be supervising them and have eyes on them to make sure that they're safe and that if something happens and they become unsafe, you can intervene. Creating a safe home for your baby means creating a home where there's not smoking. If you are a smoker, doing it outside, not in the home, and if you can smell the smoke, and this is any kind of smoke, if you can smell the smoke on your clothes, that means that it could be transmitting to your baby. And we know that babies who are exposed to smoke have increased rates of infections and sudden infant death. So it's actually really important to keep that away from the baby. Additionally, illicit drug use, excessive drinking, these are things that are gonna put you as a parent or caregiver at a inability to best take care of your baby. And so therefore we find babies who have caregivers that are excessively drinking or using illicit drugs at a higher risk of, um, of being susceptible to safety hazards and of unfortunately being susceptible to sudden infant death. So those are important things to keep in mind also. Okay, last thing, look out for red flags that would mean that you need to seek care for your baby. Some of these are gonna be intuitive, but others of them might not be. Newborns are uh, kind of weird and funny, if you didn't know. They are very special little individuals, and sometimes things that are normal in newborns are not normal at any other time of life. Um, so again, just to reiterate, if you ever have a question, reach out to your healthcare team. That's why they're there. They wanna answer your questions. Some big red flags that would mean you absolutely should go seek care for your child would be one, if they have a fever, or actually even if their temperature is low. Um, a low temperature in newborns can also mean that they have an infection. So uh, for most children, we consider a fever anything 100.4 or greater. But for newborns, because we're more concerned about infection, most, you know, most pediatricians, most providers will say if they even have a temperature of 100, um, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, whether it be axillary, meaning you take an armpit temperature or rectal in their bottom, 
they would want to know about that right away so that they can help make a plan and decide if you need to do anything differently going forward. As far as that lower temperature, the number you're looking for is 97.5. If they are lower than 97.5, you wanna call your pediatric office and touch base right away. Other red flags are gonna be any big changes in behavior. Now, all babies are gonna have fussy days. And some babies even are gonna have days where they are what we call inconsolable, meaning they're fussy and crying, and even what you're doing to help them out isn't working. And that can be really, really challenging. But if that's happened all of a sudden, if that's not typical for your baby, and they become inconsolable, where they're crying for extended periods and not responding to your soothing, that is a reason to reach out to your healthcare team. If they're not feeding like they have been, there's big changes in their feeding. I mean, beyond just, you know, being a little bit maybe extra fussy with taking their bottle, but if there are big changes in how they're eating, and especially if that then leads to changes in their urine output or even poopy diapers, some babies around one to two months of life will change their stooling patterns a little bit where they're not pooping all the time. But if there's any big dramatic change that's not typical for your child in their feeding or their pooping or their peeing, it's definitely time to check base with their healthcare provider. I know it can be upsetting to think about anything possibly going wrong with your infant. And the truth is that most infants do wonderfully. Um, there aren't any big safety concerns. There are no red flags that are ever going to pop up. But it's good to know what they are, and it's good to, again, know that number to call if you have any questions, just in case. It's gonna help you be more confident, and it's gonna help your baby be safer. I hope that this uh, video was really helpful for you today. If you liked it, please give it a like. Um, if you wanna be notified of when my next episode of Parenthood Prep comes out, go ahead and hit on hit the notification button. Um, please subscribe if you've been enjoying my videos and share them with uh, friends or other expected parents who you think might benefit from these videos. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye.